Hello everybody and welcome back to another video and today I'm going to be confirming once and for all that I'm the most generic coaster YouTuber of all time by making a yearly top 25. The rules here are obviously self-explanatory, the only thing I'm leaving on this list is Dragster because I don't want to have to deal with that and normally it'd just be at number 25 rather than the current number 25, so just if you want to pretend that's on the list. There will also be some fun graphics with each entry. The arrow indicates how it's changed from my last list, with the up arrow meaning it's gotten better, and down arrow meaning it's gotten worse. Spoiler alert, most of them probably got worse, just because of the nature of riding new coasters. And there'll be a circle with a number in it, which indicates the world ranking according to Captain Coaster. So yeah, let's get into it with number 25. Coming in at number 25 on this list is Copperhead Strikes at Carowinds. You know, compared to places like Europe, the US really lacks a lot of mock multi-launches, Copperhead Strikes really the only thrill one, and besides that it's like Slinky Dog Dash and like Manta, and those barely count. And the reason I say that is just because these rides are really fun. And while the two launches, especially the first launch from a standstill, are a bit weak, the airtime and especially the hang time more than make up for it. Elements like the two loops, the cutback, and especially the Jodor roll give great hang time, uh, inversion like the zero-g roll is just kind of plain fun, and there's some good air times, especially the one right after the first loop, and the one in the rolling launch. The ending's also quite fun with the fast-paced turns, and while it's not as good as something like Icon at Blackpool Pleasure Beach or Helix at Lisaberg, it still is a very solid mock coaster, and I think more of these should be built. Okay, so you you want to hear a joke? Okay, here goes. Morgan's reputation in the coaster community. But honestly, I gotta disagree. I've only been on two Morgans, but uh, Steel Force is definitely the weaker of the two, but I think it still solidly makes this list. Steel Force, and I assume by association Mamba and Wild Thing, are pretty much evolutions of those Aero Hyper coasters, namely Magnum and I guess Desperado. But honestly, this ride takes what Magnum did well and just does it better. There's solid floater on the first drop and the first hill. The helix gets some decent G-forces, but that finale is way better than anything Magnum does. While something like Magnum does give a lot of airtime, this coaster gives a lot better of airtime. It's not quite ejector, but it's definitely a strong floater and it's really sustained. You're out of your seat for a solid like 3-4 to four seconds on each hill on the return trip. And honestly, that's all thanks to these restraints. These restraints are very unrestrictive lap bars that pretty much are guaranteed to give you at least a few inches of room, so you go absolutely flying out of your seat, and unlike Magnum, it's not super painful. But honestly, yeah, Morgan Hypers are awesome, and while I can't technically speak for Wild Thing Mamba or Steelio, I'm guessing those aren't too far off from this one. In deciding where to put each ride on this list, I was thinking Banshee might fall off of it, just because I hadn't been on too many inverts at the time, and I might have overrated it. But after seeing this ride again, it absolutely deserves to be my third favorite invert. This ride has pretty much everything you could want out of a B&M invert. The first drop is good, because it doesn't have that little dip before the drops that every other invert has for some unknown reason. Uh, the pretzel knot is a guaranteed gray out every time. It's got a solid pace with all the rest of the inversions until the very end with the heartline roll where the coaster suddenly slows down a lot and gives you great hang time through that ending. It does have a bit of a rattle as does do all the other B&Ms at Kings Island for some reason, but the vest restraints on this I would say do help, although they are a bit restrictive. It's probably better than getting headbanging like you'd get on something like Raptor. Banshee is definitely the most complete B&M invert I've been on, because it really covers everything you could want, and it's just an overall solid ride. Definitely the second best at Kings Island when I went, I don't know if Orion's better. Before visiting Busch Gardens Williamsburg this summer, Griffin was in serious danger of falling off my list to do to a steel curtain, but after rewriting it, I think it definitely earned its place back on my list. I said this in my Busch Gardens video, 
but I think I started to underrate this ride just because I'm not a huge fan of the other dives I've been on. This was my first one, and I liked it, but then I went on Val Raven, which is just bad, Oblivion, which has a good first drop, but then literally nothing else, and Yukon Striker, which is okay, but this ride absolutely destroys all three of those. This ride has some shockingly good airtime on the first two drops in airtime hill near the end, thanks to the old-fashioned BNM over-the-shoulder restraints rather than the newer vest restraints. The Immelmans don't do too much, but they do act to kind of pad out the ride time and make this ride just feel more complete. Without them, it might be a bit lame, and the splash sound at the end is a nice spectacle. Yeah, while I do understand the general roller coaster enthusiast kind of hate towards dive coasters, uh, this and maybe Chikara at Busch Gardens Tampa, I don't know, are definitely worthy of being recognized as very good rides. Coming in at number 21 is TMNT Shellraiser at Nickelodeon Universe, and shout out to the Airtime Thrills Raw Footage channel for this footage, and anti shout out to Nickelodeon Universe for not having an official POV. If you aren't aware, TMNT Shellraiser is the world's steepest coaster, and it's pretty good, but it does have a few issues that hold it down. Going over some of the pros, a lot of this, the inversions on this ride are quite fun, the standouts being the hang time heartline roll at the very beginning of the ride, and of course, the world famous banana roll, best element ever, let's go. But the inversions aren't my favorite part of this ride. The launch at the beginning is way more powerful than I was expecting, because I've never been on a Gerslauer launch before, but it really accelerates you fast. And of course, you have the 121.5 degree drop. When you get to the top, you can see all of the New York City skyline, and then you go down way below yourself, and you get some pretty solid airtime, I remember, and it's just a really fun and unique experience you don't really get on any other ride outside of, obviously, Takabisha. But the main cons with this ride are the pacing issues you get with having a lift hill in the middle of the ride, and of course, the really awkward rattle on this ride, and the fact that you can see the track shaking all over the place, like, off-ride footage of some of the larger inversions on this, it, it looks weird. And yeah, while the rattle is a bit annoying, it doesn't dampen this great ride experience too much. Now, if only Sandy's Blasting Bronco was ever open. Oh yeah, baby, it's Millennium Force, the best steel coaster in the world. Let's go, first giga. Wait, no, no, actually, no, Millennium Forceless. This ride sucks. There's no G-forces, no airtime. I hate this ride. But uh, yeah, in reality, Millennium Force is a really solid ride, but there are better gigas out there. The first left hill and drop, of course, you get a beautiful view over Lake Erie and a beautiful view of two rides you'd probably rather be riding, but uh, still... Uh, the first drop is very good, not quite as good as on Fury, but it's still a pretty long feeling drop and gives you some solid airtime in the back. That first turn after the drop is definitely not Millennium Forceless as it gives quite a gray out afterwards. And then you go into the tunnel and the ride kind of falls apart. Don't get me wrong, it's fun, but it's not much more than that. The two airtime hills that give floater are pretty decent. The turns are more just scenic and speed based than actually giving you any g-forces but it's just kind of okay but then once you get to the other side of the tunnel and go through the speed hill and the final bank turn it does pick up a little bit as the speed hill gives some decent strong floater not quite ejector and the last turn is just kind of fun overall it's a long fast well ahead of its time ride experience that still holds up quite well even 23 years later unlike that station music it's great but uh ooh, it's dated Okay, I might have said this before, I'm not 100% sure, but I have enough to say about the Smiler to make an entire video about it. This ride with its crazy theme and history is interesting enough on its own, but uh, not to mention, this is a really fun actual ride. The Smiler, of course, is the coaster with the most inversions in the world, and like TMNT Shellraiser, they're all quite fun. But this time, you have 14 of them. The inversions are as follows. Heartline roll, corkscrew, dive loop, dive loop, reverse sidewinder, sidewinder, corkscrew, corkscrew, sea serpent roll, corbra roll, corkscrew, corkscrew. 
so it does have quite a lot of inversions to enjoy. My personal favorites being the back-to-back -back corkscrews right at the end that you go into with a surprising amount of speed and definitely gives some whip. And while it does have a bit of that same TMNT shell razor problem that it has a lift hill in the middle of the ride, it's not as bad here. And while it does have a bit of a rattle, yet again, it's not as bad as TMNT's. And there's just so much fun about the ride experience itself, but honestly, that's not even the most interesting part of this ride. This theme is just wild. I've seen some of the old promotional videos for this ride, the stupid song that plays on loop the entire day, and just the weird theming all throughout the ride in the exit area. That had a lot of theming for some reason. This, this ride's just crazy. I don't know what they were thinking when they made this. But uh, with what Alden Towers was able to do with such a small plot of land and the tree restriction is quite impressive, and the fact that it turns out to be a really fun ride is great too. Afterburn at Carowinds is the second B&M invert on this list, and my second favorite B&M invert overall, and I'm fairly convinced this ride is actually trying to kill you the entire time. This ride is probably the most consistently intense ride on this entire list, with half the elements making you gray out, like the vertical loop going up into the Immelman, and the Batwing, both being major gray outs for me, and there's really not too much to talk about with this ride, it just tries to kill you, and then tries to kill you more, it's just super intense. I don't know how I can word this any other way. Um, just let the POV speak for itself. It's really fun. And in my opinion, the second best ride at Carowinds. Okay, so I like being of hypers, but with the exception of one coming up on this list, I don't consider any of them to be amazing or worthy of my top 25. But, you know, adding an extra 100 feet onto it, now you maybe have a ride. And that's pretty much what Leviathan is. And I mean, while this ride is no Fury 325, it's pretty much the light version of that ride. The airtime is all very strong, the turnarounds are just fun, there's a great sense of speed throughout the entire thing, and as I was saying earlier, it's just a sized up B&M Hyper. But it also comes with the same benefits of those as it's a very smooth ride, the restraints are good, and it's a B&M Giga. I'll talk more about Fury later because, spoiler alert, that's on this list, but this is just a slightly worse version of that ride. Now here's that B&M Hyper I was talking about. Nitro is my favorite of these, and it's not even close. I mean, I haven't been on Mako, but still. Everything that's good about every B&M Hyper is on this ride. It's on the tall side of them, it's on the fast side of them. The float rear time hills are way stronger than most. Like, seriously, I don't, like, Diamondback gives you nothing, but this gives you a ton, so I don't know what's going on there. And then you have the upwards helix, which is a gray out every time, which is really rare to see on a B&M hyper like this. And then you have the finale of Bunny Hills, which is just really strong, sustained flutter. This ride showed to me what B&M hypers are able to do, and it just blows all of them out of the water. This is what I expected Behemoth to almost be, but not quite. This is my third favorite B&M I've ever been on, and although Mako looks good, I can't imagine it being a more complete and fun ride than this. Skyrush, I have been on this ride so many times, yet I still feel like I have absolutely no idea what to think of it. Some days when I get off this ride, I think, wow, what a great ride, the first drop is amazing, which, I mean, it always is. The pacing and the fast turns were so fun, the airtime hills are pure, there's great ejector, Stangle Dive is great, and it's a full, complete ride experience, and the restraints really aren't that bad. 
But then other days, I think this ride is slow, rough, and that the restraints are just awful. And honestly, just because of the nature of this ride and its restraints and all that, I can understand getting off this ride and honestly thinking it's terrible. But based on this quite high up position I gave this ride, uh, I definitely don't think it's that. Obviously, for a ride that I've been on dozens and dozens of times like this, I mean, you're going to have good rides and going to have bad rides, but I'll just say this is definitely my favorite ride at the park as long as you ignore a certain RMC. But honestly, I will say the restraints on this ride are that bad. There's people who say they're tolerable. In my opinion, honestly, no, they're not. I mean, you just kind of have to deal with them and it brings the ride down. Coming in at the first of four wooden coasters I have on this list is Phoenix at Knobles. Just by looking at a POV of this ride, it looks like a boring old wooden coaster. But obviously, everyone knows why this ride is so great. It's obviously the old PTC trains with just the single buzz bar and no seatbelts at all. Even if the restraint system on this ride wasn't that good, you would still get some really solid airtime on that double down, some of the faster hills, but it wouldn't be nearly as good as it currently is with these restraints. Pretty much any time you go up or down, even into like a turnaround, you're getting flung out of your seat. And honestly, that wouldn't be fun at all if Knobles didn't do such a good job with maintaining this ride. This thing is still running really smooth, even all these years later and even after being moved from San Antonio. This ride is just great, but it isn't great enough to be the best wooden coaster in the world over and over again. Seriously, Golden Tickets, like, there's so many better options, but, you know, you could do worse. Morgan's back on this list, but uh, this time it's for a ride that people actually enjoy, and of course, that's Phantom's Revenge. If you don't know, Phantom's Revenge used to be um, Steel Phantom, which was an Aero custom looper that was the same in the first half, but then the second half, uh, where the ejectors hills are now, there are a bunch of inversions, so I don't know what was going on there, but Morgan did an excellent job retracking it and making it a new ride. The first drop is kind of whatever, but the second drop, where you go under Thunderbolt and you use the terrain to have a larger drop than the first one which is definitely weird on a coaster um that one is great then you just have some decent maybe millennium force like turns but honestly who cares because that's not why people like this ride people know this ride of course because of the ridiculous out of nowhere ejector hills that just send you flying out of your seat because the restraints on this ride are great they pretty much don't touch your lap and you just have the ability to get absolutely flung out of your seat on some of the strongest airtime, and I'm running out of time in this POV, just this ride's good. Pantheon is my personal newest entry onto this list, and it's an exceptional ride. Well, I do have a few issues with this ride, like a lack of theming, or uh, maybe it could use another element or two. This ride, in its ride experience itself, does absolutely everything perfectly. The first launch isn't too powerful, but then the, that lets the inversion get quite a lot of hang time. But then you have what this ride's probably most known for, even though other rides have it, the multi-pass launch, which is decently powerful, and there's a hill that gives some floater, but then you go backwards, and then the hill gives a ton of ejector, which I was not expecting at all. I was expecting that hill to be kind of floaterish all the time. Then you go into the spike, then back to that hill, which again is more ejector. Then you get to the top hat, and then the main part of the ride, which is my personal favorite. There's a great sustained outer banked airtime hill, a great hang time giving, zero G stall, you've got some I-305 Maverick snap transition thing, and an outer bank that sometimes does stuff and sometimes doesn't. None of the elements on this ride mess except maybe the two airtime hills before the multi-pass launch, but they give some floater. And yeah, this ride, I have no real complaints with the ride itself, and it was definitely a good sign for Intamin in the future. Sorry if I sound a bit different, I'm recording this like 3 months later, but coming in at number 11 is Ghost Rider. Honestly, I think Ghost Rider is the first ride on this list that I can actively say I don't think I can find a negative with. Every single aspect of this is great, from the solid airtime, great laterals, and extremely long duration, especially for a wooden coaster, along with being smooth, at least when I rode it, like, that was like a few months after the GCI retrack, but still, I'm guessing it's still relatively smooth. Its pace is excellent, I got a night ride on this, so that was even better. I think you'd be hard pressed to find anybody, enthusiast or not, who wouldn't have a great time on this ride. 
The only reason I don't have this ride any higher is just it has a lot of strength, but it isn't like too focused on anything in specific and other higher rides just excel in areas that this ride is just kind of decent in. But what else can I say? It's Ghost Rider. starting off the top 10, and narrowly beating out Ghost Rider for being my favorite wooden coaster that isn't named El Toro, is Mystic Timbers at King's Island. And you know how I was saying with Ghost Rider, that it was a very well balanced ride with many good aspects, but no significant strengths? Um, yeah, Mystic Timbers is the opposite of that. This ride is just airtime hill spam. It is a very basic out and back wooden coaster layout, that's just a bunch of airtime hills, and a bunch of airtime hills back followed by the shed, which I'll be talking about a bit more later, but it just works because the airtime's really strong and it's really smooth, despite somehow coming out right around Invader, which is super rough, so I guess good job, Kings Island. It's easily the best coaster in the park. I mean, I haven't been on Orion, but it's probably pretty comparable to Leviathan, and just, it kind of feels like an enthusiast made it, which, you know, enthusiast, but also it's a great ride. But not as great as the shed, baby. Woohoo! Lights and a few projector effects. Let's go. The the lack of a backwards launch drop track inverting on this wooden coaster is it's really sad. Kings Island should be disappointed. Just get this ride off this list. Re replace it with the beast or something. Who cares? This ride's stupid. Okay, I'll keep this segment brief. Every year I always include Wicked Cyclone on my list, I just don't know where to put it. I wrote it when I was like 8 or 9 and I loved it, but I don't remember what the ride experience itself was like. So I'm just honestly guessing, based on what the POV looks like, that it's gonna go here at number 9. I should finally be getting back to SFNE and getting a re-ride on this so I can actually place it correctly going in the future. But yeah, that's all I have to say. It's a good looking RMC, can't remember what it was like though. at number 8 is the final new coaster I have on this list, Wildcat's Revenge at Hershey. I've already talked about this ride a million times in other videos on this channel, so I'm going to keep it relatively brief. Okay, so spark note summary time. Drop is good, especially compared to other RMCs. Step up under flips mediocre. The airtime hill right after that's good. The rest of the airtime hills in the first half of the ride are all pretty solid, including the wave turn. It's probably my second favorite moment on the ride behind the big ejector hill. Uh, the double down's kind of weird, but I sort of like the laterals on it. Then it's kind of mediocre, but the zero G rolls are pretty decent. And then uh, the bunny hills are good, like all RMCs. That's it. Okay, moving on. Ah, oh, yes, yeah, so Fury 325, a ride I like a lot, but not as much as other people. This is another ride where it feels pretty redundant to just sing its praises, but why not? The first drop is a top three first drop for me on any coaster. The airtime throughout the entire ride is also very solid. The three hills near the end are good. And uh, the treble clef is a very unique element and probably the best part of the ride outside of the drop. It's another one of those rides where I just have no issues with any part in the ride. I just personally prefer more intense B&Ms or rides like Intamins. At least that would be the case if this ride wasn't the most dangerous coaster in the world. Did you see that crack earlier this summer? It's ridiculous. How is this ride open? It's so unsafe. I can't believe it. This is just...
Yes, another excuse to brag about being on Nemesis and be all contrarian and stuff saying that it's my favorite B&M. Woohoo! Anyways, this ride is like, amazing. I mean, it shows how important terrain is, this ride is like literally Batman the ride. Okay, maybe that's a little bit of an exaggeration, but still, that really helps this ride. The pacing is absurd for a ride that's of this height, like 70 feet or something like that. The inversions are honestly even more intense than the Batman clones, which sometimes get a lot of hate, but those rides are intense. The theming is quite notable, especially compared to the lack of theming on literally every other ride on this list, and I recall it being quite smooth and I don't think I got any headbanging on it, and I think this retrack is going to help it even more. But unfortunately, there are a handful of rides above this, so yes, I have to talk about those as well. Hey, it's another ride. I feel like I've already said everything I need to say in past videos. But hey, Timbers is a great ride. It's a reason it's this high. Well, the beginning of the ride is a bit weaker with a mediocre first draw, a few airtime hills and turnarounds. The ride takes a huge jump in quality once you get to the three ejector hills. Those things are just bonkers, but going off of what Hurler had, I mean, might as well. Then, I know I've said this comment in the past, but then after that, it just feels like a bunch of RCT3 elements that they just jam together. But that's not to downplay how fun those elements really are. Like, sure, it kind of feels like you're twisting out of nowhere, and then no element kind of leads into another, but who cares? It's just a bunch of airtime, hill, and inversion spam. And you're never going to complain about that on something like an RMC. Yeah, that's about it. There's really not too much to say about these RMCs. Now you see, Maverick is a great ride. Not that these aren't all, but I also like Maverick. Another one of those rides I really don't have any complaints about. The launch up the hill is solid and the drop is great. That first airtime hill is just absurd. And the inversions on this ride are probably the weakest part, but they flow pretty well with the uh, snappy transition things that are all over the place on this ride. And it's, it's just fun. And then you have that launch in the tunnel, which may be my favorite launch on any coaster ever, period. It has the kind of rock work and theming and landscaping that Pantheon wishes it had. Overall, yeah, this is... This is actually kind of similar to Pantheon, it's just better. But you know what other ride this ride is similar to? Uh, oh, this isn't gonna work, because there's still t more of the POV to play. I-305. Maverick is similar to I-305. That's that's what I was saying. But yeah, uh, I don't know if I've made this clear in the other times I've talked about it, but I really like those awkward, intimate, snappy turn things. And also, I like intense coasters more than like stuff like Tamer b and Hypers. So yeah, why wouldn't I like I-305? While it's a more flawed ride than I'd like it to be with a relatively short duration and some annoying trim breaks, I can excuse it when its highs are this high. That first turnaround, I mean, it's been talked about to death, but it's it's that first turnaround, you know. The first drop is almost as good as Furious if it wasn't for those restraints, and it, it's just a bunch of those snap turns. Those are the greatest thing ever made. Please make make a coach that's all snap turns intimate, please. Okay, for a ride I called overrated the first time I wrote it, number two is pretty high for El Toro. But that's simply because I have been enlightened by not sitting in the middle row of this ride. Just just sit near the front or near the back. Don't don't sit in the middle of this ride. It's actually pretty obnoxiously rough. But yeah, uh what can I say about this? The first drop and the two preceding hills on this ride are straight up ridiculous. Probably my favorite first drop on any coaster. As long as you do not sit them towards the middle, please just don't do it. Then you also have the Rolling Thunder Hill later in the ride. So this ride has like four of the top 10 best airtime moments like ever. So that's crazy. But then the ride's not even done then because then you go into more snap turns. Yes, thank you, Intamin. This ride is long and exceptionally tall and fast for just being a wooden coaster. And my only real issue with this is it does have smoothness issues. But you can ignore them pretty well as long as you don't sit near the middle. So yeah, if you ever ride this, just sit in the back and you'll have a great time. Except 
not because this ride never has a line and I don't think GP like it very much. Whoops. Okay, no obnoxious fake out, no sarcasm, nothing. Steel Vengeance is number one. I guarantee you, you know why this ride is great, but just in case some random person who doesn't know much about coasters somehow made it half an hour into this exceptionally niche coaster video, I'll explain why. This ride is another one of those not very balanced ride, it's just a ton of airtime. it has the most in the world, by I assume a lot, I'm not sure how much the voyage has exactly, but it's an absurd percentage of this coaster. And it's not just quantity over quality either, the first two airtime hills with the top hat and the outer bank are... Again, two of my probably top five favorite airtime moments ever. The inversions, especially in the first half of the ride, don't slack either. They're really fun. The double down's great. And then, well, I don't like the second half as much as some other people. It's still really good. I mean, it's a bunch of just generic RMC elements shoved together. Of course it's good. And I can say all this praise about this coaster, and I've never sat in the, the back of this ride, or even relatively close to the back, so... I don't have any idea what that's like, but this ride hauls. Anyways, let's see if next year, uh, Steam and Demon at Great Escape can pass it. Who knows, I might be going there. And yeah, I'm done making this video. I have been working on this for months because I've just been busy with school and stuff, and I just want to get this video out, please. I still have to edit it. Oh, God. Anyways, like and subscribe, guys. Yeah!